thanks for checking out Chemistry Connections on the Hopewell Valley Student Podcasting Network, a proud partner of HVSPN.com, where students come together to publish content to share with the world. The opinions represented within this episode are those of the content creators only. Please enjoy the show. Welcome to Chemistry Connections. My name is Anushka Agarwal. And I'm Nick Bailey, and we're your host for episode number 26 called The Chemistry of Photosynthesis in Leaf Slugs. Today we're going to be discussing how leaf slugs use photosynthesis and why that's pretty cool. So photosynthesis usually occurs in the chloroplasts. Chloroplasts are organelles and cells mainly found in plant cells. And it's really important to note that throughout this reaction, carbon is conserved. So the same amount of carbons go in as come out, and then you see the cycle just keeps going around and around. Photosynthesis usually occurs in plant cells, but some animals, like the leaf slug or Costia stella kurishime, also have the ability to photosynthesize. Yeah, this is because of their green, which is actually because of the presence of chloroplasts, and they get these chloroplasts in them by eating a lot of algae at, um, in their habitat, and this gives them the ability to photosynthesize and making their own food. And photosynthesis is a process that is, again, generally seen in plants. And it takes the basic equation of 6 CO2 plus 6 water uh, goes to 6 oxygen and 1 glucose. However, it's a bit more complicated than that, and you'll see as we go on. Although the light reactions are really cool, there are also other reactions that don't need light that pretty much make the process of photosynthesis go along. And the main thing here is going to be the Calvin cycle. So this is the process where the plants actually take the CO2 and turn it into glucose. So the process starts with three five-carbon molecules called RUBP and three one-carbon molecules, CO2. These then combine to make three six-carbon molecules, which are fairly unstable. So they pretty much immediately will turn into six three-carbon molecules. Then through a process called reduction, um, we're going to be taking six ATP and six NADPHs, which will be donating their electrons they get oxidized and the carbons get reduced and then we have six three carbon molecules called three G3P. And then one of these G3P molecules gets put on the side to get turned into glucose later and then the other five go towards the process called regeneration where they're going to get further reduced by three more ATP molecules and they're going to go from five three carbon molecules to three five carbon molecules which are the same RUBP that we started with. And this cycle needs to happen twice in order to make a single glucose molecule because glucose is C6H12O6 and we only get one three carbon molecule as the products of the cycle. Anyway, I found this topic particularly fascinating because it is one of the rare exceptions where animals use uh, photosynthesis. So as I said earlier, photosynthesis is commonly used in plants and it's only because the leaf slug eats so much algae and is able to extract the chloroplasts from those plant cells that we are able to even do this process at all. And that in itself is pretty impressive. Another reason why we did this project was because leaf slugs are just really cute. Uh, as Anushka said earlier, if you can, I would look up a picture of them because they are really cute and you will be impressed by their just magnificence. Just like Nick said, this topic really drew me in because I always assumed that plants were the only things that could photosynthesize. I never realized that animals potentially could photosynthesize, and researching about the leaf slug opened my eyes to the fact that I don't know everything about the world, and that there's so much stuff that we haven't even discovered yet. And it's just so amazing to think that we are so evolved but we only really know like 10% of what lives under the sea, for example. And it also just made me wonder how we can use the knowledge that things like the leaf slugs absorb chloroplasts and can photosynthesize them to our advantage to help restore the environment. Thank you for listening to this episode of Chemistry Connections. For more student-run podcasts and digital content, make sure that you visit www.hvspn.com.